Hey everyone, Angie back for another Breeze to Basics video. So, as you may notice, once again, I am outside. Yes, it is still very beautiful out. Honestly, it feels like summer. It's like 80 something degrees, I think, here in South Carolina, in Columbia. So, how could I not film outside again, right? Um, and like I said, I do quite enjoy this kind of, you know, selfie style of video. So, uh, of course, I'm outside once again. No cheat sheet. I know. But, um, moving past that, we can go ahead and get into today's topic, which is regarding, as I'm sure you know from the title, cold foam. So, this is something that I've also received um, quite a few questions about regarding working as a barista at Starbucks. Um, I guess clearly not enough for me to feel the need to include it in the Frequently Asked Questions video last week, but often enough that I feel like it should be a topic of its own. So we are going to hopefully very briefly explore what exactly cold foam is, how it is made, and how it can be used to enhance your espresso beverages. Actually, not even espresso beverages specifically, but we can get more into that. So, our first order of business is to, you know, state the obvious, what is cold foam? And so, cold foam is essentially a way of creating an experience comparable to that of a cappuccino. Uh, this is also my opinion. <clears throat> this isn't like some sort of set in stone fact, but I view cold foam as another way of trying to ascertain the same experience that, for example, having a really foamy cappuccino would give you. Except, you know, it's sort of flipping it on its head and totally twisting it because it's cold foam. There's no heat involved in the creation of the foam. So that is essentially what it is in a nutshell. It's very comparable to the foam you would find in, you know, a cappuccino, like I said, but it's much thicker, kind of comparable to that. It's almost like a loose whipped cream kind of, or like a meringue, more so than like really full of large air bubble-y kind of foam. Um, and it's pretty tasty, cold foam is. So that is what cold foam is, but now the question is, how do we go about making cold foam? Which is a very good question. Um, of course, I can only speak for how Starbucks makes cold foam. I don't even know if other coffee shops make cold foam, but obviously I only have coffee shop experience with Starbucks, so that is the experience I'm pulling from. But we got birds out here too, y'all. Um, <laughs> To answer that question, cold foam is made by putting it in um, a special kind of blender, essentially, a special kind of vessel that we then put into a big blender, the same thing that we would use to um, mix up the frappuccinos, and we put it on a certain um, mixing setting. There are certain numbers on the machine that you can press, and you press one of those buttons, one of those numbers, and you know, about 20 seconds later, you have beautiful cold foam. So it's very simple to make and also very customizable. You can add um, flavored syrups into your cold foam. If you don't want it to just taste like milk or dairy, you can have it actually be flavored as well, which is pretty cool and opens the door for a lot of new, uh, exciting and interesting possibilities. Um, <clears throat> When we make cold foam, when we make plain cold foam, we utilize non-fat milk. Now, I, you know, before filming this video, I was pondering for quite a while how, like to myself, how, why do we specifically use non-fat um, milk to make the foam? And I was trying to draw a comparison in my mind to something else that um, whips up relatively easily and the first thing that came to mind was egg whites and after doing a little bit of research I discovered that egg fights egg, <laughs> egg whites pardon me have little to no fat in them the actual egg white portion which of course is the same case for our non-fat milk hence the name non-fat it has 
little to no fat in it. So I feel like this, sorry, the fan um, out here just turned on. I feel like that is the common denominator um, between the two. So I believe that's why we utilize non-fat milk to make the cold foam traditionally because uh, the lack of fat helps really, I guess, like there's no, I guess maybe the fat would separate it more so or not let it, um, you know, sort of be a more cohesive cold, cold foaminess. Um, that's just my speculation anyways, but you know, you can take that with a grain of salt if you please, but that is how we make it. And that is the comparison I drew to sort of, um, you know, have it make a little more sense in my head. So that is how we traditionally make cold foam. And like I said, you can add some sort of flavored syrup into that if you please. And that would of course change the taste of the cold foam and make it a little less bland. Um, there are also other drinks at Starbucks that utilize cold foam, but don't utilize the non-fat milk. For example, the Cloud Macchiato, which I did speak about in last week's video, is of course, like I said, um, made from powdered egg whites, partially. Um, it's made from powdered egg whites, some sort of syrup flavor, depending on the kind of Cloud Macchiato you get, as well as 2% milk. And so I guess maybe the slightly more fat content in the 2% milk helps balance the powdered egg whites and still allows the cold foam to maintain its thickness. Um, again, that's just speculation, but kind of makes sense in my head, so let's go with it. Um, so the point, me mentioning that is because non-fat is not the only dairy product used to make cold foam. We also have for the um, salted cold foam cold brew, we use vanilla sweet cream uh, with some salt packets in there, which, and the vanilla sweet cream is made from mostly heavy cream with a little bit of 2% and some vanilla syrup. So uh, I'm actually not entirely sure <laughs> why it makes a really good cold foam maybe something to do with the salt interacting with um, you know the components of the heavy cream perhaps but that's a really good cold foam too so the point being cold foam can be made from a bunch of different milks in fact you can even make cold foam from whole milk by itself or even um, non-dairy milk alternatives such as almond milk or soy milk or coconut milk those can work as well However, how well they work is questionable, especially the alternative milks. If you've ever gotten some sort of drink with cold foam on it and you requested an alternative milk, a non-dairy milk, the foam probably didn't turn out super great, super thick, because I guess the... I'm not quite sure, <laughs> to be honest. I guess maybe the lactose that can be found in any sort of traditional dairy product also helps in the process. And the fact that that is absent from those milk alternatives, I think has an impact on the final result. Um, so yeah, I think we've covered everything I set out to in the beginning. We discussed what cold foam is exactly um, how it is created. Oh, I guess we haven't touched um, really explicitly on how it can be used to improve your beverage. So as I said, cold foam is something that can be made plain or it has all these a wide variety of uses and is very, for the most part, customizable, at least in terms of flavor. So, you know, you can add it onto uh, an iced espresso beverage, you can add it onto a cold brew, a nitro cold brew, you can even add it on top of iced coffee if you want. It, I guess you could even add, you know, anything that's cold really, you could add it on top of if you desire. Um, and cold foam just helps add this extra layer of creaminess almost, just the way it feels in your mouth is very smooth, silky kind of, I think would be an apt way to describe it. Um, and, oh, I just had another good point. It 
is especially great in espresso beverages because it is so enjoyable to sip the espresso through the foam. It just totally creates a different experience and overall mouthfeel um, when you're consuming your beverage. So that is going to be it for today's video. Sorry, I'm pretty sure I just got bit by a mosquito. So I guess that's a consequence of filming outside. Um, so I will go ahead and conclude this video before I get eaten up out here. I would like to thank you guys so much for checking the video out. I hope that you found this video interesting, um, or at least useful, perhaps for the next time you go into a Starbucks, you can be a little more well equipped. Um, yeah, I hope of course that everybody is staying safe and healthy and practicing self-quarantining, self-isolating, social distancing, etc. Um, and of course, as I've been saying in the past few videos now, we can get through this as long as we stick together and don't give up on each other. So with all that said, I thank you guys so much for checking the video out. I will see you guys next week for another Barista Basics video and also stick around for my new Coffee Talk series that will air every Saturday. It also may, well, it may be more frequent, I don't really know. I really like playing it, but I haven't played it since Saturday and I've been really craving it, so I may crack, play it, and upload it early. We shall see. But uh, with all that said, thanks again for checking the video out and I will see you guys next week. Thank you.